Uh, good afternoon, everybody. Welcome to the uh, April Pressbooks product update. I'm Steele Wagstaff, the Pressbooks product manager. And we want to show you, start this meeting by showing you some of the things that we have developed and released over the last month. The first, uh, we have a couple of smaller accessibility fixes that we made that we hope will improve experience for all different kinds of users. The first one is on your Pressbooks sign up page, if you were to go to the sign up, um, you should generally, when you're visiting a website, you want to be able to tab through the different options and see clear focus changes. And so we made some improvements for this page. So now I'm just gonna start tabbing through and you'll notice as I'm tabbing, there's a visual indicator. This is a blue outline. My visual indicator has changed each time I've tabbed through something. So it can clearly show me where the focus is. And so here you'll notice as I'm tabbing down the page, the focus indicator is changing and we've just defaulted to the default browser styles. So whatever browser you're using, whatever their focus indicator is, We'll be using this consistently everywhere on the page. You'll see your focus indicator changing and being altered. Another change we made was many of you have added custom uh, logos to your network, and the logo will display all over your all over your site. But previously, um, when you visited an individual book on a network and you had a custom logo, we added what's called uh, an ARIA label, and the ARIA label tells user or screen reader what the contents of a link are. So the label for that link. We had a bug where we were actually displaying the name of the book as the ARIA label for this link, when this link actually takes you back to the network homepage. So it ought to be the name of your network. So we fixed the ARIA label there. So now if you look, I'm just showing you the code here, but if you were to look here and you'd see inside of this header, inside the, the ARIA label is the name of the network. So now the unsighted users are seeing the correct ARIA label so they understand where that link will take them and what the title of that resource is. Another thing that we did was we wanted to um, improve how we handled what are called digital object identifiers. So in Pressbooks, when you enter book info, you have the option to add a digital object identifier or a DOI for a book or for a chapter. What this is, is it's essentially a permanent URL that allows you to identify a resource on the web. Many of you that are publishers or library publishers will issue DOIs or have DOIs issued for your book. And you can, you've always been able to enter into the metadata and display it on the homepage. So here's a sample DOI entered for a book. When you visit the web book, historically we've always displayed this. If you go down to your metadata at the bottom, you'll see the DOI. The change was very minor, but the DOI, the organization that maintains the DOIs, used to have their resolver was dx.doi.org and they changed it uh, and they now no longer require the dx.doi. They prefer that people just use simply doi.org. So we've just made a very small change so that now whenever you're using DOIs, the resolver will just use the recommended DOI URL instead of the dx.doi.org. So that was a DOI a resolver change. Another exciting change that we made upon request was um, we want to we want to be able to support really all of the world's alphabets or languages that people want to write and share their knowledge in. And so in Pressbooks, there is a feature that allows you to add support for uh, different typefaces or fonts that don't have all of their characters encoded in every uh, font or family or typeface. So if you come into your book and click on theme options, do you see an existing set of language and script support options? So there's a lot of different languages that have unique alphabets. And what, when you select an alphabet here, Pressbooks will download a specific font face that has all of those characters or glyphs and use it in your book and make it available for your EPUB and PDF exports. We previously did not support the Cherokee syllab syllabary or the Cherokee uh, alphabet. And so now we've added the Cherokee alphabet support for Cherokee uh, if users would like to use it. So to use this feature, you'd simply come into language and script support. You'd select Cherokee for your book and you'd click save changes. Then once you've done that, you'll be able in your book to use Cherokee characters and other kind of Cherokee writing as you normally would. So here's an example of a set of Cherokee glyphs in a book. Here's an example of a Cherokee syllabary. And then here's more examples of the Cherokee characters. Um, and then when I go to produce my exports in the EPUB and the PDF, what's nice about this is rather than them being rendered as those little like tofu blocks where you can't see the character or a question mark, you'll see in this particular book. Okay, here we go. So you can see that those characters are rendered correctly 
in the PDF export output. And the same thing will happen for eClubs. So that was a change we made to improve the experience for authors who might want to use the Cherokee alphabet or the Cherokee language in their books. Um, so another change we made, this is gonna be primarily for network managers are every user has an individual catalog. And the individual catalog allows them to list whatever books they want for their themselves as a user. This was a feature that was mainly built for self-published authors back in the old pressbooks.com days, but some people are still using this. And so for example, each user can click my catalog and see their catalog of books. And then you have a my catalog page. So if I were to view mine, I'm logged in as me. Here's my my catalog page. I haven't done too much with it, but here's my my catalog page. As a, as a logged in user, you can always go and at, administer your catalog page. But what we've added is network managers would like to be able to administer the catalog page for any user on their site. So what had happened is sometimes networks had had a particular user that had set up their, ad, their catalog page and then that person left, but the, the network manager wanted to be able to add or remove books from that catalog or, or to manage it centrally. So now what will happen is you can click the admin button for, if you are a network manager, for example, here's a user that is not me. This is the generic Pressbooks user. Here's this catalog. As a network manager, I can click the admin button and I can administer this catalog. So I can say, let's take this book out of my catalog now. This user's catalog now had that book removed. Um, I can do that for any user on my network. So here's another user, here's Ricardo. Here's his catalog as a network manager. I can now administer that catalog. So that was a permissions change for network managers that we made. That's now available. I don't think it's super widely used, but those of you who are using that and need it, hopefully you know about that and appreciate it. If you've been using Pressbooks for a long time, this is primarily for our open source users. We have a documentation site that is the docs for the Pressbooks open source project. We wanted to make, because it's for open source users, we wanted to make it so that open source users could contribute more easily to this documentation page and could make, find, edit, revise changes. So what you'll see now is that this is actually a static site that's generated from a GitHub repository with a bunch of markdown files. So if that didn't mean anything to you, I'll try to unpack that. So each one of these pages corresponds to a file or, or like a simple text file in a GitHub repository. So if I saw that there was an error or a typo in this sentence, what I could do is I could come into this open Pressbooks repository, find the relevant document, and then come in and make a pull request or suggest a change to fix or correct the language on a page. So we've, we've republished a new page here. This is the documentation for open source Pressbooks. And here's the detailed documentation for developers with its own table of contents. We're gonna be continuing to improve and refine this and make this a better resource for open source users over the coming months. But that was a change we made. We went from having a couple of WordPress installations to doing a single uh, single repository with a set of editable markdown files in the hopes that it would, it would allow open source users to find and edit and, and help improve the documentation uh, more easily. A last change we made um, that relates to documentation is if you don't already know about these, there is the Pressbooks user guide. And we systematically, Thomas, our support and documentation specialist, has gone through this user guide. We've continued combining and improving chapters. And we've gone through it. We just did a big crawl through and made sure that we don't have any broken links or any links that are pointing to the wrong resources. So that was a pretty Herculean effort. We did that for both this guide and for the network manager guide. Thomas has a bunch of other things planned for documentation improvements, and I think he's going to be presenting about that next month. If you have ideas or suggestions for things that you'd like to see in our guides, please let us know. You can send them along to me or send them along to Thomas at Premium Support, and we'd love to make sure that our guides and documentation are meeting the needs of you and your users. So those are the, the big changes that I wanted to share that we were excited to ship to people in last month. I'll pause again for any questions about anything that I just shared. Okay, terrific. So what I want to do is I want to hand it over to my colleague, Lee, who has a little bit of an update about some brand tidying that we've been doing at Pressbooks. Sure, thanks, Dale. Um, so it's not a brand refresh. We're not making any huge changes. We're just trying to make it so that it's a little easier for folks to talk about Pressbooks. And there are uh, some brand um, logos and things that we are getting rid of 
because they're just not as useful um, in describing press books. So just to show you what we're doing um, so that it's not a shock is uh, this old logo where you see the EDU is going away um, because it's uh, not very, a, it's not very clear as a brand. Um, what will happen is um, we'll just lean on the rest of the logos that we have available. So you'll keep seeing our press book uh, square. You'll see the press books word mark here and our logo, horizontal logo. And then when we're referring to the directory, you'll see that one there. Um, what you're actually looking at right now is our brand guidelines. So if you ever do use our logos, I'm happy to send this to you as well as a zip file, file for our logos as well uh, with instructions for proper use of it. The other change that we're making, which I'm very excited about for the sake of my word counts and my character counts is this authoring and editing platform here. Um, this word will now be Pressbooks Create as opposed to Pressbooks Authoring and Editing Platform. Um, and that is an idea that my colleague John had. Um, and it's gonna make it a lot easier to fit the name of the product into various places and things. So just a heads up that that will be there. Thank you so much, Lee. Thank you, John, for the great idea. And you may see or hear us referring to Pressbooks Create in the future. The idea is when we talk about the platform that we use for authoring and editing, it's Pressbooks, a bunch of plugins and themes. We're going to refer to that by the kind of aggregate name Pressbooks Create. And so you'll probably see and hear us using that a bit more in the future. Hopefully it feels like a smooth and natural change. I don't know how many people were religiously saying the Pressbooks authoring and editing platform before. So, <laughs> so I don't think it's going to be too big of a drastic change, but, but hopefully that's a, a good news for everyone. I just want to say thanks. I really appreciate all the feedback that people gave on the planned updates to the network catalog. And it was just great hearing from you about what you're doing. Thank you for all that you do for open education. And we'll look forward to seeing you next month at our next product update.